because I don't know what it would do to the screen, but I will make sure. (laughs) In about two minutes of Scott, we actually play another screen that comes up, and it is see-through, so they actually can uh, see the cameras kind of through the, yeah, so picking the nose, um, putting your pants back on, all that kind of stuff. The theme, the theme of American Horror Story this uh, season is incredibly good. Yeah, I don't know. No, it's it's called the Apocalypse, and it's the very first episode. Uh, season eight, episode one is called The End. <laughs> it's great. Look who's in my house. Look who's in my house. 
I am so excited, you guys. We have Scott Norris here on the Macro Live Chat Show, and he is one of my partners in crime. We <laughs> have had so much fun together in the Arcanum. If you guys don't know what the Arcanum is, you got to check it out. But I'm telling you, Scott is a marvelous uh, individual, heart, and artist. I'm serious, Scott. I am very <laughs> serious. I say what I mean. I'm so excited you said hello. Yes, well, Janice. Thank you. Too. Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, you're making me blush here, but uh, thank you so much. <laughs> it has been a fun ride through the Arcanum up to this point. I'm surprised. Uh, not surprised, but uh, it is very interesting, the journey that we've both taken from beginning in the, the cohort as apprentices to masters to to this and everything else and beyond. It's Isn't fantastic. it true? I mean, we have um, AD is in the background. He's the one that got us together. I mean, there's so much history right now. This show is very personal for me. So I'm very excited and I just am so happy. What I want to do now is I want to thank people who are here, Scott. So Becky's here. She has a great image for us. I saw that Jan's here. Any of you guys that are hanging out, Come over, say hello to Scott. I will check and make sure I get these questions answers if you have questions for Scott. Before we get started though, let's just watch a quick sponsor video and then we'll dive into Scott Norris. Today's Macro Photography Live Chat Show is brought to you by Adventurers of the F-Stop, a $29 monthly membership to elevate your macro and landscape photography and business skills. Just go to membership.sullivanjphotography.com and check out all the details to push your creations in 2018. You know what's funny, Scott, is like, when I we're sitting here in the background, we have to be quiet, and I just want to yeah. talk to you. I <laughs> know <laughs> it's like so hard, but I, you know, it it is such a cool. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Uh, so let me just tell everybody real quick. This show is every other Thursday, and once a month, I have a special guest, and Scott is our September guest. And like I told you guys in the last show. I just really love what Scott does to his work. He's very artistic, he's very good at what he does. And you're gonna see some great tips. You're gonna see some good information. That's what's awesome about Scott. He will share what he does. We're gonna talk about him in general and then where he is. And at the very end of the show, we just talk about what he's up to. So what I always no like- pressure. No pressure, no pressure No pressure, no <laughs> pressure. So what I always like to ask everyone is how you got into photography. The reason why I ask this is because you have gone through a journey to where you're at, which is just amazing work. And I'm curious on really where, what floated your boat and how did you even go into this sector of photography that we all love? Well, I've been... I've been interested in photography for a very long time. Um, and the period of time I'm going to tell you, I haven't been taking pictures the entire time because there was that space between where I didn't have access to a darkroom anymore and then when digital became viable where I could actually start doing stuff that I wanted to do. But I actually picked up my first uh, DLS, uh, SLR, not DSLR, but SLR in about 82 and was in the darkroom in high school and college and a couple years after college and having a blast doing black and white photography. Uh, I, I think I got interested in photography looking at National Geographic, to be honest. I wanted to be a National Geographic photographer, you know, go out in all these great locations. And I look at these spreads, there's 10 or 12 images and they're all just absolutely wonderful. And I think, oh, that's great. You go out with a couple of rolls of film and you shoot and you're done. Then I realized <laughs> that those guys will shoot 10,000 feet of film. And an average uh, 36 exposure roll of film was about three feet. So you can yeah. do the math. I'm not going to do that now because I'm a photographer, <laughs> not a mathematician. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I realized that uh, I didn't have the money to do that, yeah. uh, nor did I at the time have the talent. So I said, well, I'll do something else. I didn't, photography wasn't going to work out. My degree's in photojournalism, but I never wanted to be a journalist. So, uh, uh, so I went into television. And through television, doing news production, uh, I got interested in 3D animation. And through 3D animation, motion graphics, special effects, I got really good building nothing 
building something out of nothing. So right. through different 3D softwares, but a lot of Photoshop. I've been using Photoshop uh, full time since about version mm -hmm. four, but I've actually in college I used version one. So oh I've been wow, using it really? Time. And so when I, when mm -hmm. digital became good enough that I could actually start doing stuff with that, everything I did was in Photoshop. I didn't I didn't know Lightroom until about five years ago, oh. maybe a little longer. But uh, so my approach to processing photography is my approach in 3D is I'm starting from nothing. And so when I take a shot, it's the mm -hmm. basis of what I'm doing. I'm not saying I'm gonna try to catch, capture everything in camera. Yeah. I try to get a good composition where everything is sharp, the lighting is okay, but most of the work that I do is in the processing of the image in Photoshop, Lightroom, and other other things like that. Right. So well, that kind of brings gonna, us to today. <laughs> well, that's yeah. Then, well, we're going to dive in a little bit more. But but I mean, what what really got you getting back into photography since you were into TV? What did you just start shooting just for the heck of it, or how did you um, go that? How did you go to that route? Well, I bought a little Nikon point and shoot digital camera. I don't even know what it was called. And I, I think it finally broke recently, but uh, it was a two or three megapixel. Is that and on, and, and uh, I was living in Chicago at the time. And honestly, what I think what got me back into it was we were, we were at a Cubs playoff game in the bleat and the, uh, the, uh, the rooftop mm -hmm. across the, the street from it. This was, it was before they made it to the world series. So that was a really big deal there in the playoffs and the sun was setting on the other side of the stadium from where we were sitting. And I said, oh, I'm gonna get a picture. So I took a picture of it and took it back and said, okay, this isn't what I liked, this is what yeah. I wanted. So I said, oh, I'll take it into Photoshop. And I went, oh, okay, now I remember why I love photography so much. Cause I had, I had taken out my film cameras and taken shots occasionally, but that was really what got me going. And then um, I, got my, uh, I got a Nikon D70 and that was my first digital camera. Uh, and from then I was shooting all the time and I said, wait a minute, I can sell these. That's what I've always <laughs> wanted to do and I can start doing what I want to do. And so yeah. I got a cheap tripod and uh, started going out and shooting and um, moved up uh, to a D700. And that's my, I've had that for seven or eight years, however long. And that's still my main camera. And, um, gotcha. oh, wow. and so from there, it just, it just grew exponentially. And then when I hit the Arcanum, that's when it really just opened up it was just yeah uh, it was you the were, floodgates so yeah you were you were on it you were you were you were like the 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 top person you were so good um yeah so what we're gonna do now is i'm gonna let me get things ready and i'm gonna share my screen because i want to talk about oh let me i have to do this first so I have to do a share screen, make sure I got it on the right one because I've done this before <laughs> where it's been off. And let me get into Lightroom. And people not, aren't gonna see us anymore. They're gonna see your work. And this is All one right. of the things I do like about the show is that we really can see the the images. So what I this is where I'm gonna dive in and really talk about your thought process while you're photographing. We'll talk about post-production a little sure. bit because we've got good images here. And I don't see any questions from anybody, but we might have some questions now. So let's just talk about when you have your camera in your hand, what do you what are you thinking? Like, are you looking for something or does it just come to you? Just give you know, curious. It, it just comes to me for the most part. Um, I let what is there kind of dictate. Uh, I mean, I, I don't go out and say, OK, camera. It's, it's not like divining for water where I'm letting it, something mm -hmm. leave. I go out with a thought process uh, for this was in inside here, obviously, but uh, mm -hmm. I go out to the local park and say, okay, it's, it's in the morning. I'm going to see what I can find. It's kind of foggy. So maybe it'll be a cool fog shot or right. I'll go out in the middle of the afternoon when this, there's no clouds in the sky and the sun is shining and I'll say, okay, I'm going to look for some minimalist stuff because the lighting isn't too great. Mm -hmm. uh, and other times I will literally, I will say, I'm going to go for a walk and I'll bring my camera and whatever mm -hmm. happens, happens uh, okay. inside. I'll just, I'll look at my desk and say, what's on my desk? Oh, I, my son gave me an old feather. So I'm going to sh shoot that and see what I can, what I can do with it. Um, wow. It's kind wow. of a Zen thing. I kind of let the, the objects speak to me and I just <laughs> sit and look at it. And that's one of the things about when you're, don't, don't say, okay, I'm going to take a picture of a flower and snap and move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sit with it, look at it, move I, around. Um, yeah. Uh, this, obviously this image. 
Oh, you want me to go back? Oh my gosh, yeah, you guys, I'm sorry. Let's see if I can get it back. Oh, I can't. I oh, was just going to, where is uh, it? No worries, no worries. <laughs> Everybody, did you guys see that? Go back if you guys are watching this in the replay because it is so cool. It's Scott doing uh, his, um, it's not in here though. I know it's, that. It's, uh, it's in the uh, still life gallery. Oh my gosh, I wanted no, to show it's, it's, it's in the 365. Okay, project. we'll go there. So there's there's a whole bunch of images there. I don't remember where it was, but uh, but we'll scan yeah, so, through while you're talking about how, yeah, you know, so, what you're doing. So yeah, and really, I I don't have a a particular genre. Okay, I'm a landscape photographer. I'm a still life photographer. I try to be minimalist with what I'm doing, mm -hmm. uh, but there's some that there's a whole bunch of textures and a whole bunch of uh, digital uh, work done to it. Um, I think I, I love the post-processing part of it and creating from that. So mm -hmm. I was talking to someone recently. They just they said, well, you know, you're good, but I don't consider you a photographer. Because Who to said me, that? That Somebody was a friend of mine. Yeah, they said, oh you're gosh. not a photographer. You're well, a I think you're both. <laughs> um, he said, you use photography, but you're not a photographer. And I, I said, well, I, I see your point, but I disagree with you. But uh, Yeah, I always have a hard time with that. But um, but I, well, that's all like, who's that guy? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let, let, let me, um, oh my gosh, look at how cool. Okay, so wait, we're going to go back into Lightroom real quick because I, this, I'll go back and forth because I think it's fun. But let's, sure. let's show you this. Okay, so here's an image right here, you guys. Now we're going to talk about his post processing, but let me just show you guys where it was. So this was the beginning, and look at how beautiful it is. This is the end. So we'll be sharing some of these. That's what I loved about Scott. He's like, you know, let me give you some images so we can show before and after. So this is a treat for you guys. You can see his after, I mean, and then before. We're going to do it the opposite way. Yeah, I, I like to share that. Number one, I, I don't think uh, with what I do, there's no secrets really in terms of, oh, I've got this special plugin that only I can I know or the special technique. It, it's all about just I want to share what I what I know. But what I do is is just through experience and, and trial and error and, and playing around and, you know, looking at other uh, photographers and other artists. Um, this mm -hmm. image was inspired by Harold Ross. Um, yes, I'm so happy about that. <laughs> and he's an incredible light painter. He does all, everything with a, with a pen light and lights the scene with that. This, I used a uh, homemade diffuser with my one single flash. Uh, oh my God. And you guys get to have a treat. You get to see that in the equipment section, just to let you know. <laughs> but these are just items that are sitting near my desk. And I said, oh, we went to the beach and got those rocks. Uh, and this is the before. So you can see the, the, a lot of the work that I did with the, the lighting. There's a lot of work done in uh, dodging and burning uh, or nowadays levels and curves and uh, mm -hmm. shadow adjustments and exposure adjustments. There's some texture added. A little bit of sharpening uh, in certain areas to to create what I want, and that's something that you as with the the digital uh, photography and with Lightroom, you don't have to look at your image and say, "Oh, this isn't what I wanted." You can take it into Lightroom and Photoshop and all the different plugins that are out there and create what you Oops. what you wanted to. So yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Do you like work and then like go away for a couple of days and then come back to it, or you just jam on it? I'm just curious. It, it, it depends. There are certain okay. images that just I know when I shoot it, I know what I want to do to it. That's a before uh, everyone. This mm -hmm. is not one of them. <laughs> we were at uh, <laughs> the Discovery World here in Milwaukee. It's a really cool little place. It's got an aquarium and a whole bunch of stuff, but it's based on water and they had this huge wave machine. Mm -hmm. And I was just taking pictures through it and then I got it back and said, oh, that's kind of cool and started playing with it. And then I started just turning the hue on it and I got this hue and I'm like, Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. And, and so when you're shooting, it's always good to have a goal uh, why you're shooting something. Mm -hmm. But it's you don't necessarily have to have that goal until you process. You know, sometimes I'm looking at it's so, okay. I know what I want to do with this. This is a good example. I took this. This is a, a, a lily that was outside our, our house. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I liked it, but I knew I wanted something that was more ethereal. Uh, mm -hmm. And I thought, well, you know, it's it's a bright sunny day. Let's mm -hmm. see what I can do. Yeah. Um, I was this I was is... thinking in color, but, but yeah, because this is what you had. I mean, that's yeah. like totally different in what you. It's this is so gorgeous. You really pulled it out. How'd you do that? Did you just cut it all out? Can I ask? <laughs> I, you? I 
Yeah, I used, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I, I don't have a set thing that I do on images. And so I, and I try to save my, I save as uh, zipped tip file, TIFF files. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're not huge files. Mm -hmm. But uh, to cut it out, I used uh, Topaz uh, rem uh, Remask, I think. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. It, yeah. Yes, uh, it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I blended it some. So sometimes the if you cut it out too finely, you get these edges. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it's cut out, so you have to do some work on it. So I did some right. blending with that. Yeah, it looks good. You can't even tell. I mean, you've done a great job. Here's a here's another one that I really like. It's really pretty. You know me and my flowers, everyone. So of course I'm going to go to that. But this one was is this a, a topaz one with the or you just had fun with a variety of things? I had fun with the variety of things. Yeah. I know the texture. I don't think this is topaz because I think if I recall right on this one, the black the background was dark. And oh, so I just, yep. I just blended it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um, yeah. That's I, I love to add subtle textures to things. Um, mm -hmm. It, it adds interest into the areas that are, um, th th that there's not much to it, like backgrounds and things. It adds interest without taking away from your main subject. Main subject. Yeah. Uh, you have to be that. careful with blending textures though, because sometimes if you do a texture and do it a across the whole image, Mm -hmm. uh, it looks that way. You want the, when you're doing textures like that, unless that's what you're going for, like mm -hmm. you want it to look like a, a painting or something, but the, you need to blend them so it looks like it's natural. Yeah. And that's that's yeah. what I try to do. I think so too. It looks, I mean, I like it. I don't like sometimes over everything unless, you know, like you're saying, you're going for it. This is another one that I feel is really cool. I mean, look at the before you guys. So this is what he started with. And, then, and this hello. is, this <laughs> that that uh, before image was one I stacked that. Um, oh, you did. Okay. Um, and this was the one that was the most in focus, so I used that as the uh, as the before. But uh, mm -hmm. it, oh, it, okay, I got gotcha. you. So this I'm is using, just one of several that you did to yeah. stack. Okay, yeah, I could see that it's more in focus. Yes, yeah, I could and see that. Uh, because that's a small uh, shoot of a pea pot. So it's really tiny. Mm -hmm. So I, I was using my 50 millimeter lens with the uh, extension tubes and the, the full, I've got three extension tubes, they, they st stackable and I had them all on there. So I was, and this thing was right in front of the lens. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I couldn't get the whole thing in focus uh, without moving the camera. So I said, okay, what am I going to do with it? I like it. I'm going to play around with it. And so I, I, I think I noodled with this for a long time. And then mm -hmm. I said, it needs, it needs a flare. And I didn't shoot it with a flare. Well, I'm also an animator and motion graphics artist, so I created the the dust and the flare is 3D. Yeah, see, that's great. That's so great. I uh, I added that in there, and um, there, there's several different passes of that because making it look realistic um, when it's added to the scene is is difficult really sometimes. So, so what 3D do you use if anybody out there that would like to try some kind of <laughs> 3D stuff. I well, mean, what do you I, suggest? The one that I still use, you can't buy anymore. Oh, so, of course. God. <laughs> I've used it for 25 <laughs> years and they stopped making it. It's uh, called Soft Image. Mm. Uh, it's uh, originally was a company from from France and then they moved to uh, Montreal. So it's Soft Image, but it's pronounced the French way, Soft Image. Uh, Autodesk bought it and then they uh, they uh, stopped producing it uh, 2015. Okay. So I use that. I also use uh, Cinema 4D, which is, uh, they just released the version 20 of that uh, last week. So, mm -hmm. and then I, After Effects I'll use, there's a lot of different plugins in After Effects that will do motion graphics that I do stills for to create things like this. Yeah, this is great. Now I know you guys, this is a macro and close-up show, but I, I have to show you, look at this. It's a close-up of his son. Look at how beautiful that is. That is a gorgeous, I love the way it fades in. That was taken eyes. in our garage, right at the edge of our garage. So let me show everybody. <laughs> Before, after, hello, look at how beautiful. That is so cool. I love the way that just goes right through. It's and you've taken the color of his hair and his eyes and you brought it into the background. It's just beautiful. This is what happens when you play. <laughs> I, I just I just started playing with things. Uh, you know, it's I know they're not knobs, but I'm turning the knobs all the way. You know, I, I, I take a slider and say, okay, what does it do if I move it all the way over here? What does this do? 
Um, and I think that's where you learn because every once in a while, most of the time it looks like crap and you say, okay, I'm going to do something else. But sometimes you get something and go, oh man, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, you can see that uh, I sharpened his eyes a little bit yep. because it was a lot of focus because he, he yep. never stands still <laughs> except that time. But, um, that's cute though. Now you just wanted to take a picture of your son and then you decided later on to go in and just play mm -hmm. with it. Is that what happened there? Oh, yeah, if I ever wanted beautiful. to just play with pictures I've taken of him, that's forever. Cause oh, yeah, I'm, a, sure. I'm a photographer and he, I'm always with him. So always yeah. Taking. Yeah. That's just, that's so sweet. Okay. Let me get back off the stop screen sharing here and make sure I push this rot. Okay. It says screen sharing stop. So you and I can. Okay. There we are. All right. Yeah. Okay, I think I don't think I even need to do that. I think Andy's doing it all in the background. Remember, I think he told me I didn't have to. <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, he always tells me that I just like, woo. But anyways, yeah, because all of a sudden I saw us there, and I'm like, so he's probably like, yeah, I told you I could just do everything. Just put yeah. it there. <laughs> Andy is the man behind the curtain that we're supposed to ignore. <laughs> but he That's is awesome. a wizard, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Well, I, you know, again, I'm we're, towards the end of the show. I'm going to share another website uh, that we will talk about. You know that Scott's doing very good with. So, but what we're going to do now is we're going to start critique time. Ooh. That is uh, it's something that a lot of photographers uh, are nervous about. Um, and I remember my first critique with Andy. I was very, very nervous because I wasn't <laughs> sure what was going to go on. And I'd already watched critiques, so I knew what was going to happen. <clears throat> I was when too. someone talks about your work, uh, it uh, it feels personal because the work that we're doing is personal. So, yeah, but yeah, there's there's no pain. So don't worry. about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's why I'm glad I what I started something new now is I, I ask everybody that whoever's going to push because I don't do a lot of, you know, some shows are continually critiques. This is just something that's, you know, fun to talk about. Plus, everybody has usually the same questions. But because they're putting themselves out there, I told them just just last show, I said, you know, I'll, if you have a website or a, a link that you would like us to share, you know, and two of them said no. Uh, one of them, yes, Kim, if we get to hers, we will definitely put her website down below. So nice. because, you know, this is something we I got to I got to do for them because I know it's scary. But I have to, now this person right here. We're going to go ahead and um, check out. Let me get the paperwork because I got to make sure her name's Susan. So Susan, um, AD, do I I don't have to screen share, correct? Oh, see. Oh, see, I screwed up. He says, yeah, I do, because I turned it off. See, I told you guys I would mess up. Even with AD in the background, I'm still screwing up. <laughs> okay, so let me get back on to Lightroom. So Susan is the first time Susan's been here. So she's probably really nervous. I don't know for sure if she's here or not. I'll check after we're done uh, with the critique and we'll just, uh, let me, after we're done with the critique, we'll go and see if anybody has questions. Becky's been on a couple times. She's, she's a go-getter and same with, um, Kim. So let me tell you, uh, I'll tell everybody cause I give these to every, so Scott has gotten this, but I'm just going to let everybody who's watching. Um, this is from Susan and she used a Tamron 90 millimeter. She's at, was at F 2.8 at one one hundredth of a second and her F-stop was 16 and she was using ISO 800. So here is her goal. I thought the photo gave me an old fashioned or classic feel. I can picture it on note cards or as a cover for a Mother's Day card, not as a framed picture. So Scott, you can um, you go for it, and then I'll dive in with a little bit of mine. It, these are sure. just just so that everybody know these are fast critiques. We don't sure. get into real deep, but you know. Well, I I I, I stop to take pictures of flowers all the time, and f flowers are are gorgeous, but they're notoriously hard to get the shot. You can get something close, and and that's partially because they're always over around each other, kind of funny, and this cluster makes it that they're all the same plane so it kind of makes it hard to figure out what what the main subject is and i think that i i the goal here i think is is nice because you're trying to get something that's old-fashioned this kind of looks that way 
I think it's a tad bit busy because mm -hmm. there's I don't know where to look. And then there's the butterfly that's on there, or the moth. Then I say, okay, should I look at that? Uh, one of the things with this image that I, I was drawn to, the, there's a rose that's kind of in the lower right that's the, the pinkest, uh, the, the most vibrant. And that's where I focus. And so if this was my shot, I might crop that to where you get those three images on the bottom. And right. another thing that I was thinking, yeah. And I was thinking too, if this is for a card, is I would rota rotate this uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise. Oh, uh, let me see if I can do, oh, I don't know. If your lighting might be kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> And also, uh, you said you were shooting at this at uh, ISO 800 and uh, f16. If you dropped your f-stop down, um, I, well, I know that ISO, ISO 800, your light is was an issue. But if, if you drop your f-stop down just a little bit, you might get a little bit more, or uh, the depth of field. You might the stuff in the background might be a little yeah. bit more, uh, which is always nice. It makes those flowers pop more. Great. Yeah. See, that's you've given a plenty of information here. There, this. So I think this will be perfect. Um, take it all. She's, I don't know if she's watching, but she said she would watch. So awesome. Thank you so much, Scott. Welcome. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go right into um, Becky's. Let's get Becky's up right now. Okay. So uh, Becky, uh, she says that she made this um, image with her Nikon D7100 and the Tokina, with the Tokina 100 millimeter F. 2.8 macro lens, um, and she used the one-to-one -one magnification. But I did want to let you know, Scott, I did check her behind the scenes, you know, I mean, the EXIF data. Mm -hmm. And she shot this at 4.5 at 1 60th of a second, and her ISO was 100. Okay. So I forgot to send that to you. I just I'm saw worse. that earlier. So she says um, her goal for this image involved exploring my front yard at my cabin in Blue Ridge, Georgia, to find a subject that I've never photographed before. Kudos to you. <laughs> One of the things that I love about macro photography is that you don't have to go to exotic locations to find beautiful scenery. You can find stunning mini vistas anywhere uh, you happen to be. I wanted to photograph a subject that is not ordinarily considered pretty or beautiful i had found a mushroom that was on my when she she goes she found a mushroom and was on her belly shooting away and i spotted this duo and thought it would be perfect <clears throat> this was my favorite composition and it was edited in lightroom classic but i just was not completely satisfied with the image until i looked into it at oh, she used Nick color effects and applied three filters, which gave me the look I wanted. So she says she does like the textures in the image. Well, she's doing a lot of things that uh, many photographers don't, uh, and that's shoot near you because there's a lot of things that you miss by walking past them to go to the beautiful things. Shoot your front yard, shoot your backyard, shoot in your bathroom. There's a lot of good things there. Second thing is she was down on, on her belly, which is a unique angle, which is great. So she's down low looking with a unique perspective. Mm -hmm. And she's looking around. She saw something she liked and then looked around and said she saw something else. Sometimes those are your best images when you're not, when you're looking somewhere else. So if you're taking a picture of a beautiful waterfall, turn around, look behind you. There might be something back there. Mm -hmm. uh, but this image, I love this image. I think it's a great composition. Uh, I, I might tighten it up a little bit uh, from the lower... Uh, uh, crop out some of the lower right. Um, but I love the textures in this too. The colors are really great. Um, the focus is just a little bit off. And I think I would consider it the acorns, the tips of those kind of like eyes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just like eyes, you need the, that to be in focus. So I think uh, practicing with your focus a little bit uh, would be good. And I, I would, that this was my image and mm -hmm. uh, the, I love the texture, but the the uh, the background um, contrast is about the same as the as the two acorns. And yeah. if you if you darken that some, or took some of the saturation or some of the lightness out of it, it would make those acorns pop even more. So darken the the background. You're saying too? Is that what you're darken saying? or even? I think if you took this whole and maybe the whole image and just uh, take the contrast down. Okay, um, you'd you'd still get some color in there, mm -hmm. 
but it would minimize that because the the blacks in the in the back are really I would go the other way on the contrast. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then what you could do is actually come in there with a brush. So you could do this in Photoshop or you could do it masking and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and bring in the, the contrast on the two acorns a little bit more. So they pop a little bit more. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So like individually do it. Yes. Yes. That look, that sounds but I, great. I, this is a great image. I love it. Yeah. Isn't it? And it looks I, like right below the two uh, uh, acorns, there's some little particles. You can see the little uh, circles there. I don't know if it's dust or something in there, but that in there i don't know that might be on the i don't think that that doesn't look like lynn's spot so oh, it's uh -huh. like you got some little dust in the shot there that's really yeah. cool yeah yeah i like it i like it i i i thought maybe i like the way it blends off i thought maybe if she maybe put it up to f8 just to try it to to just add a little bit more and focus sure um <laughs> I'm having like grandchildren problems in the background. Sorry, I can, guys. <laughs> I can hear that. That's... I'm like, it's so distracting. I don't know what the deal is. Okay. So hopefully everything's okay. Um, it is a family show. <laughs> so I was thinking maybe if she pushed it to um, F.8 because she, she her ISO was still low. I think she could push it up her ISO if she, well, if she wanted to try it. You know? I don't know if this was handheld or tripod. Uh, if it was tripod, you could. What I always do is play around. Uh, yes, you think, yes. okay, I want I want the depth of field to be really narrow. You shoot it that way, and then you shoot it where different settings. Because then, if you if you're on a tripod, you can say, okay, I don't like the, that, but I like this part. So you can blend the images together. Yeah. So, uh, handheld's a little harder. You could probably yes. still do that, but you'd have to be quick with your thumbs adjust, <laughs> adjust your settings yeah yeah seriously okay so that's great great tips um you know what i think we should go for it because it's we got some good time and i would look kim she has um she put this in last minute and i just love it so let me i think it's a perfect perfect image for you and so i'm glad that we could fit this in let me sure. read what her stuff is um, she used a uh, the Nikon D850, and I, I think this was another one that I didn't send you. That I just got the X. X I never had. Uh, you, you you did send it to me. Oh, I did send it to yeah. you. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. So it's a D8 uh, D850. I think that's. See, I'm not an icon. I think that's a newer Nikon, correct? Yeah, I'm I'm jealous. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. and so she shot it at uh, one two hundred two hundred fifty of a second at f. 6.3 and her ISO was 250 and she used a 150 millimeter 2.8 lens so she says hmm what to say about this image this image above all that I have made so wait this image above all that I have made so far is an attempt to really express an emotion my goal is to communicate a feeling of being tired and broken of time past the final gasp, and of life's end. This is the first time I have really tried to express such a strong and fairly sobering emotion. I look forward to hearing what you and Scott might have to say about it. So I'm really happy that we got this on the show because she's pushing out of her comfort zone and stepping out of the box. So definitely, Scott, I know that yeah. she will suck up what you have to say. Well, first of all, I have to say that you were successful in your goal because that's immediately what I got with this was that uh, it's a it's a beautiful flower, but it's missing its petals and it's uh, it looks like there's some that are shriveled, and so that get, gives that sense of loss and of 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 uh, all the things that you said there. It's 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 wonderful. I I, I love the image because it's minimal and that's really to my wheelhouse. Um, the color palette is because everything is kind of the same. It, and it's it's not saturated. It, it gives that kind of a, a gloomy, drab feel. So it's full of emotion. And uh, trying to do something that's from the heart, try you can have those feelings, but actually going out and putting something out there that says, this is me, this is how I feel, um, it's hard to do that because it makes you vulnerable. And then putting it out there for critique when people are going, going to talk to you about it, uh, that's hard. Uh, mm -hmm. but that makes us better artists. It makes us better people and it makes the world better. I think when, when we as humans can share what we feel and be honest about it and open about it, 
Um, and I think this is very successful. Uh, there's a couple things about it that I think can make it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The uh, I wish there was a little bit more of the, the middle of the flower that was in focus because it's a very, very narrow uh, focus area. Um, I, I don't think it needs to be much, but it mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it as a whole it works. But when I start to go in and because that's what you want people to do, you want to speak, people to spend time on your image. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know where to really look because there's not much in focus. So I think if you had something right in the middle there, that would be a little bit more focus is great. Uh, I would also maybe add just a little bit of contrast to this because um, there's some dark areas in your texture in the background that if you added that contrast, um, it makes that flower pop just a little bit off the background. Maybe your goal is to have it be part of the background and that's good, but just, you know, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how I would do it. Maybe with the a curves adjustment, um maybe just a contrast adjustment maybe just bring the blacks down a little bit um there's a lot of things you could do uh because i think that would, would would make that flower we'll see that even that's too much but that's that's kind of what i was thinking dehaze that's a dehaze i'm just playing with them as you're talking <laughs> yeah uh you yeah. don't want to go too far because one of the things i like about this is there aren't blacks in it yes yeah. it's it's a very narrow uh tonality range which is really nice the colors are fantastic mm -hmm. uh, this would look good as a, as a large print i think um one of the things that people are so stuck nowadays on getting everything tack sharp it's all got to be perfectly in focus and mm -hmm. sometimes there's pictures that you look at and you think technically that's fantastic but mm -hmm. i don't feel anything right oh, right i totally agree that is so and, and to me i want to look at something and, and say oh man i feel this you know, when you were describing it, I had tears in my eyes. Mm -hmm. I'm like that. There's, I can feel that. Yeah. And yeah. it, um, my my nitpicking about the focus, and that's what it is. It's a nitpick because this stands. It's really good by itself. So mm -hmm. very well done. I I think this is a, a fantastic image. Yeah, I think that it would be good too uh, if she had a series of these. You know, I mean, well, it would be a great idea. portfolio. I think you know of of a variety of this um, feeling. But in different subjects or different flowers, because, you know, uh, just like, you know, I don't know, because we're all individuals and I think it no. would be powerful. Uh, that was my suggestion is that I do, I, I, I feel like if this is, I get this feeling of it. And um, I think, you know, if you sit, if you look at it by itself, you know, you could, you know, like you were saying, everybody, oh, blah, blah, blah. but if you see a portfolio like this and you get it and you yeah. write that statement, that is big. So I would hope that she would keep doing this yeah. and thinking uh, this, about, you know, that. It's so. always good to explore feelings uh, and moods uh, in your images. Um, it's a way to stay sane sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, it's a way to, as a, as a release sometimes. I've taken shots that uh, my wife has looked at and she said, are you okay? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'm just, I'm exploring, you know? And, um... Yeah. So what, one of the things too, I thought, um, you know, if she, it depends. Cause I, like I say, I like this a lot. I really do. And I thought, you know, I've always, and I, I thought too, a little, I was getting a little deep here. And I was thinking, you know, it would be nice is to have, it, it would be a lens flare, but it wouldn't really be a lens flare because it's the light that we would see as we pass. So yeah. I was thinking about that. I'm like, I wonder if she would add that. And I kind of was playing with it and it actually looked pretty good. I'll share it with Kim later because this is sure. not about, you know, but this is something I was thinking about. But um, yeah, so I thought, well, maybe, maybe something like that. But this is great information. I totally appreciate it. Thank you so much, Scott. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go back to us yay because i did screw it up and he did it <laughs> thank you AD. so yeah that was really good information and again i apologize my grandson was really upset <laughs> so i hope you guys could hear scott with everything that he had said so i appreciate that scott um so now you know what's the fun part which i love it is equipment time equipment to well, get I've to already know mentioned us that in my more camera. detail. Wait, oh. wait, 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 we got that first. <laughs> <laughs> now you could go for I, it. I forgot this is, a, this is a slick show. We got graphics yeah, got and everything. Um, when it comes to equipment, I, uh, I, I'm i a big proponent of the best camera you have is the one you have with you. Um, 
And like I was said earlier, I was jealous of the D850. And I, now that both Nikon and Can Canon have the, the, the mirrorless coming out, which I've heard really good things about both of them. But I still have the D700, and it's a great camera. Uh, there's limitations. Uh, and I know it's, it's like Clint Eastwood. A camera's got to know his limitations. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it's, a, it's a workhorse, and I love it. So I don't have a lot of new equipment. But uh, I, I did mention uh, one of the shots that I had earlier. I built my own diffuser. And it's all you need is a piece of paper, a big sheet of paper, duct tape, and cardboard. Oh, well, see, I love that. Look at this, you guys. That's, I'm trying to get it in the shot here. It's, that, oh, it, it's you know, uh, you can use, you could probably use vellum. You could use different stuff. I use a, when I use my flash through this, I have to use a pretty strong setting because it, it, it does block a lot, but it diffuses nicely. I just have a few clamps and a C-stand, or you can clamp it to, you know, the door frame or have someone hold it for you. Um, I don't have enough stands, and so when I use this, I have to handhold my flash. I've got a trigger on my camera, so I have to handheld the flash. So I every shot's just a little bit different. Yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, and and then another thing that I just bought that I absolutely love and is this thing. Yeah. Co so I can get good color. <laughs> So um, yeah, it's, do you um, is is that's not the color checker, right? What is which is that one? Because I'd like to share. You could share. One of the things that I do is you'll give me your links and I'll share them down below of your goodies. Because uh, that's that's pretty good size. I like that size. Yeah, it's a good time. I look at the, I'm looking at the the stuff here. And I don't. Uh, it's the DKG Color Tools Digital Color Card. And color and card are spelled with K's. I got this on uh, at uh, B and H. So. Oh, uh, okay, cool. Yeah, it's it's great. And then, uh, oh, I did want to show that shot of the uh, the uh, the little uh, uh, bottle. Oh yeah, see that's so the was, one that was. It, yes. Yeah, it's, it's yes. a really it's really small. Um, and then for my macro shots. I just use this guy. Oh, is that the tubes that you were talking yeah. about? Yeah. So you just put those in front. Okay. I did. Yeah. There's a couple now, of those. Yeah. There's. Sure. There's. Yeah. They. 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 Okay. Great. They okay, unscrew. Uh, there's three different settings. Now this has no electronics in it. Yes. Oh, so okay. If you're going to use these, you have to have an, a lens that. Oh gosh, effort. I haven't seen one of those lenses in so long. <laughs> That's great. Well, these are. This is. I bought this in like '84. Oh yeah, you can. So I mean, you I, can hear it. Yeah, and my 50 millimeter lens is also also that way. If you want to use the the rings with uh, newer lenses, you have to get one with the electronics, and they're they cost a lot more. So oh, this was like, see, this was like nineteen dollars. Well, do me a favor, Scott. Um, give me the. That and your lens. So, sure. So the lens, that, and your color checker. Now, that's a cool, the color checker. Now, you know, I, I was we did a color correction, and I have to tell you, I don't use a color checker passport. I use my own uh, color correcting. Mm -hmm. But um, back in the days, uh, we had the numbers. I don't know. I mean, when I was doing my colors, you know, you have the numbers, and then, oops, and then I would adjust the numbers, the colors from the numbers, for my clients, you know, it was more interior design. Yeah. It wasn't like doing commercial stuff, but I keep saying I should just get that and try it and just well, play. I had it once and I played uh, with it and that was about uh, it. <laughs> I, honestly, what I, I use the grayscale on this. Uh, See, I that's what I, I have too. I eyeball the colors um, because yeah. most of what I do is not, I mean, it's not photography where the PMS or the Pantone color has to be exact. Yes. Uh, yes. It's, it's what I feel. But when I'm doing uh, the occasional headshots or events where I know the lighting's not going to change, but I'm shooting a lot of different areas, it's nice to have someone hold that thing up. Uh, and so you set your color, uh, the base for everything. Uh, so, right. And it just, it saves time. Easy, and, huh? Because sometimes you get in an area where the color of all the lights are different, and this way you get a, a baseline. Now, sometimes if the lights are, the color of your lights are different, you have to eyeball it anyways. You have to fix it because... It'll tell you that, oh, yeah, you've got tungsten lights, and so everything is orange, and so you color correct, and it's it's different. And 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and color correction, mm -hmm. boy, you really do have to, I mean, you can, you know, with the reds, like that red flower that you had, I'm sure it was just like, wow, you know, yeah. it gets really, you know, tough, especially when it comes to macro stuff. Um, but yeah, so no, that's great. I love all that stuff. And what I like about it too, is what we were talking about, Scott and I were talking about is like, you don't have to have all these expensive tools. I mean, we were talking, chatting about this before, um, you've seen his work. It's beautiful. We're going to share more of his work a little bit later, but I mean, his work is amazing and he's not spending all this crazy money, you know, for his tools. So it's not you know, for lack of trying though. I'd like to spend yes, a lot you of work, money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Huh? When you, I mean, can we win the lot of my husband? Just win the lot of boy. I'm getting all new stuff. <laughs> yeah. Icon, if you're watching. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. Just saying. Canon, yeah. just saying. Just saying. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So let me see. What are we on next? Next, we're going to talk about how you keep yourself motivated because, you know, everybody goes through phases up and down, up and down. And this is a segment that I really like to try to help others that are in that low time. And, you know, if you can give your, what do you do? Because obviously you're still producing amazing work. So how do you get through that? Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, several years ago, two years ago, I guess, uh, maybe it was three, I don't remember. Uh, I was feeling not creative. And so oh. I said, well, I'm going to I'm going to try to just shoot something every day. So I, I started a 365 project uh, and I learned I, I start before I started. I had a couple stipulations on the 365 project is I was going to shoot mm -hmm. uh, and process and post something every day. It did not necessarily mean that what I shot that day was what I posted. But I was going to shoot, process and post every day. Uh, and. Uh, the biggest thing about a 365 project is you have to be public with it because you won't you won't stay with it if it's not public. If you don't share it and have people saying, oh, that's great. I want to see what you do tomorrow. I want to see what you do next week. And, oh, there's a holiday coming up. What are you going to do for the holidays? <laughs> um, second thing is, is don't start it on January 1st. You never get it done. If you, It's just like all the New Year's resolutions. You, you've got too much going on at the beginning of the year. I started mine on October 1st. Mm. Um, that's, that's a what, great suggestion. I didn't even so, think about that. So that's a that's a big big thing to really help you get going. And if you can't do it every day, do it uh, once a week or something. Second thing is is take your camera with with you all the time and just shoot. I don't like it. I don't. There's nothing to shoot. Just shoot. You know, just hold your camera up in the air and shoot. Um, you'll be inspired by that. Uh, another thing is is to go to the museum and, and look at all the different kinds of art. Look at sculpture. Listen to music. You can get inspired by that. Uh, I go to the, the the Milwaukee Art Museum here all the time and just walk around, and I'm it's 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 awe inspiring to see some of this work. And you'll see a piece that the color will uh -huh. will they'll, they'll say, oh, I want to do something with that. Or you'll see a sculpture and say, oh, that would be a great. I, I have an idea for a photograph. Um, and, and then another thing is to just put your camera down and walk away uh, and stop for a period of time. Just say, I'm not gonna do anything for a week. Uh, and and let it just all that energy that's the the bad energy mm -hmm. flow out of you because uh, sometimes idea. you do need to walk away. Yes, but yes. you got to come back. So don't don't walk away. From <laughs> Scott will come and get you if you don't. Yes, <laughs> you know you got to uh, that camera. <laughs> and so right now I'm in the mode of of uh, just I just shoot every day. Uh, I've kind of been in a dry spell where I'm only producing one or two images that I like every month. Uh, and to me, that's that's not good. I want to do something. I want to be producing something good every day. That, yeah. That's a that's a that's a pretty lofty goal. But when I'm only when I look at my Lightroom catalog and say, okay, this is the month of August, and I have two or three shots that I like, you know, I'll need to work yeah. with that. But the way I do it is yeah. to shoot. And so I look at August, and I've got several hundred or a thousand images, um, and I'm saving them all because I might go back later and say, oh, wait, that was a good shot. I'm going to reprocess right. that. Right. No, that's good to know, too. He's like, you can go back. And then, yeah. And one thing that I, you know, like I was telling everybody is that your post processing is just absolutely gorgeous. And so I'm sure that when you go back to your work because you're feeling something different and then you're like, hey, I can do something with this later. So that's something that's a good thing to do, too. I like that idea. Go a back to of, old images, too. Yeah. Years old. Um, oh, interesting. I, recently i went back to stuff that i shot in like 2011 
Oh, and really? It, and it was uh, the f photograph, the raw stuff was awful. But I thought, oh, there's some really cool colors in that. I can do something and use that uh, as the basis of a digital image. Right, right. I need to do that. I haven't been back and seen my stuff in a while. <laughs> but maybe something will float my boat. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's a great idea. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I'll have to go back and see what I can find. And then I'll share it with you if I find something. I'll, otherwise, I'll be like, nope, didn't work. <laughs> but it's a good idea. I love it. All righty. Well, what we're going to do is I'm going to... I, I want to ask what you're working on. We kind of said, you know, you were shooting, but I do want to share my screen um, to the Fine Art America because we were talking about this before. So, Scott, let, let us know about this and what you're up to. Um, I don't remember how I found it. I was probably doing some searches for how to sell my images online. And I joined, I believe, in 2012. Uh, and no, 2011. I see it right here. Oh, 2011. <laughs> wow. It's even longer than I thought. Um, so the, the first thing I have to say about being on any of these sites where you're, especially one like Fine Art America, where there's a whole bunch of people on there, all different genres, uh, is you have to stay with it. Um, because the, the longer you're on and you have to be, you have to be somewhat su su successful. Mm -hmm. Say that three times. Yeah, uh, I couldn't. <laughs> you, uh, you, you have to sell things. You don't have to sell a, a ton of them, but the more you sell, the higher you get in the search because mm. they, they want to push because Fine Art America makes money. Yes, Through, yes. The, I mean, it's just like any other site. That's how they make their money is taking a percentage. So the more you sell, the more they make. And so they're going to push you. Um, you have to have really good quality stuff and mm -hmm. you have to put, put up new stuff quite often because I've got a, a, a few followers um, 50 or 60, uh, and, and then there's other people that come by that don't actually follow it, but, uh, that could keep coming back and purchasing. I've got a couple, uh, one of the things about Fine Art America is you don't know who is purchasing, mm. uh, but they do tell you the city and I've got oh. uh, a couple images that there's someone in some city that keeps buying them. And I'm, I'm oh. assuming that it's probably a retail place that's buying my image and then marking it up and selling it themselves. But I oh, wish I but uh, but no, it's uh, I I'm doing quite well with that. So if it's if and you don't have to do a lot of work with it, um, mm -hmm. they have their own uh, way of getting your images into the search engines. Uh, you have to keyword uh, very well. You have to do a really good description, and your work has to be good because mm -hmm. people aren't going to stop and look at it. Right. Um, oh my God, this is so cute. Is this an animation or a no, shot? No, that you... that, that's an actual <gasps> little toy. Look at how cute that is, you guys. <laughs> See, that's a close-up. It's allowed on the show. <laughs> yes. But and I also mix in a lot of, I do some straight digital work, um, mm -hmm. a mixture of mm -hmm. digital and photography. Uh, there's some 3D work in there. Um, I love this, Scott. I shared this on uh, the social media platforms. That's just absolutely gorgeous. Did you shoot? That's all ice, right? That's frost. On frost, our, I mean. Window. Yeah, uh, this was, I, I don't know, I don't know if this is, I've done this a couple times. This might have been one of the old ones at our old place. We wake up in the morning in the middle of the winter and it was, you know, it's 10 below outside or something and the, the windows are leaking like a sieve and the, the frost is all over there. So I, and then I take shots of it. I think the sun was behind that one and obviously a lot of textures and stuff added to that one. But See, uh, what I like, what I like is that you can get up close and look at things, which is really cool and fine. Oops. It's not doing it for me, but you can, everybody. You yeah, can, that's they, what's don't, nice. they don't let you get up. Uh, you can't make it full screen because they don't want oh. people doing screen captures. And yes, yes. That's smart. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's yeah. a great place to sell your images. So yeah. Okay. Um, we'll go so I, you know, if anybody can email me through my website or something and, uh, I can talk further if anybody wants to know more oh, about it. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, let's go back to us. That is so sweet, though. Thank you, thank you for offering that. that yeah. You know, because they might have questions, especially, you know, that's one of the things we, of course, you want to buy a new lens, you, you know, let's put your work out there. And I've always said, you know, I wanted to say that Susan was here and she said, thanks, Scott. So thank you, Susan. I mean, she's she was here. I just, I was actually not paying attention. I'm so bad. I was not paying attention to the chat. That's just a chat show. But um, she was here and she said thank you. So that was really cool. Awesome. Um, yeah. Glad I could help. 
So I this we're we're going towards the end. I really do try oh. to keep this within an hour. I know it goes by so fast, doesn't it? It does. And I just I, I mean that's one thing that's really hard is that I do I promise everybody that I try to do it within an hour. But we, they've got some good information, and I'll put all your links, I'll, everything down below, awesome. and I'll I'll put fine art down there also so yeah, people can see and if work. anybody wants to reach out to me and talk about stuff i, I can't guarantee that i'm going to have a whole bunch of time but uh, uh ask questions i i, I want to help i i'm not one of these people that says oh i don't want to teach you how to do this because then it'll be better than me and i want to <laughs> i want to share i mean we're oh all, yeah you you are we're you're... all we're all better with art so I, if you're going to try to make art and photography is an art it is i know there's people that disagree with that but um i, I want to help so yeah well thank you scott yeah and you i mean everybody sees your work very beautiful and look everyone he's not like i say he's not using like these crazy that's um the one that oh gosh i'm blinking out so the one photographer that you like Harold <laughs> Ross. gosh harold sorry <laughs> harold <laughs> he doesn't use a lot of um expensive equipment either he just uses the flashlight that's what he's saying i'm like this is such great news because sometimes i always hear like oh that you know you hear other people what a great camera you have you don't have to have that just be creative like you've given everybody some ideas and pushing and just trying things and it's just uh, i really do appreciate you coming on the show and I knew it was going to be good. I knew you were going to like just tell everybody and, you know, push push out of your comfort zone. And it's good to see that. Uh, I really appreciate the three ladies that came in on today and they stepped out yeah. of the box and, and did that. So um, that's the I'm only just, way you get better is by pushing. Yeah. So true. So true. All right, you guys. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to let you know that the next show will be September 27th. It's just with little old me. So mark your calendars and submit your work and your questions. And again, um, thanks. Uh, totally. Thank you with my, all my heart, Scott, for coming on to the show. It's my pleasure. I, I love hanging out with you. We need to do that more often. Yes, we do. <laughs> we do. It's been a long time for sure. All right, you guys. Um, see you in two more weeks. So get to the macro and close-up and micro photography, and we'll chat with you soon. Have a good evening, day. Bye, everyone.